Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for August 26, Thursday, 2021, 3 p.m. Remind everybody we have a special reverse aging health call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. with um, Patty McPeak and Dr. Russ Newman. A lot of information is going to be shared. Right now, the master is fast asleep. And the mind, the servant, is playing the role of the master. And the servant is created by the outside world. It follows the outside world and its laws. Once your awareness becomes a flame, it burns up the whole slavery that the mind has created. There is no blissfulness more precious than freedom than being a master of your own identity and destiny. Osho. When it comes down to life mind mastery within the great mystery, it is all about discovering the source of pure awareness inside of us. This is that simple, obvious awareness that is always watching, listening, and experiencing everything in our lives all the time. It is the light behind the movie screen of our minds, responsible for projecting the entire picture onto everything that we feel, sense, and see. It is responsible for shining light on every single thought and feeling that we have about anything. It's always the source of what we are experiencing in every moment of our existence. We don't give awareness enough credit. We rarely recognize that it's there and hardly ever take the time to sit down with it, relax into the source of it. The reason we take awareness for granted is because it is ever present. Always here now, just like the air we are breathing. Yet think about it. What if awareness wasn't present anymore? What would happen to our lives? Who would we be without awareness? Who would exist if there were nobody to be aware of our existence anymore? These are some, some thoughts, deep thoughts to contemplate. Yet when we do take the time to explore them, something magical happens. We start becoming more in touch with this divine state of awareness. Whatever we focus on is what we experience more of. Whatever we focus on is what we experience more of. And eventually manifests into physical action and form. Whatever we meditate on results in who we are going to become tonight and tomorrow morning. As we become more aware of the infinite spiritual source of awareness inside, we become more connected with what's totally in charge of what we're magnetizing. We can see each thought fly by and see exactly how each one is attracting, creating, and designing how our entire lives unfold and manifest. It is only when we become conscious of this perfect divine play manifesting inside of us and all around us that we stop fighting ourselves, each other, beating our heads against our inner emotional prison walls. When we stop pushing up against life and start appreciating that everything is an aspect of the great sacred mystery, we start resonating at a higher level of consciousness. We begin feeling more expansive when we wake up in the morning and greet the day with a childlike curiosity, creativity, and wonder. We do this because at the source of pure awareness, it's easy to realize there truly are no actual prisons in this infinite quantum field of intelligent energy. 
Prisons are only limiting aspects of our highly creative imagination. If you name me, you negate me. Kierkegaard. On a karmic level, every person has a unique inner emotional prison. And this is part of their unique soul's destiny. Every human came here to release the lie, release the lie that their soul was fed. They came to re-experience the feelings of being confused, rejected, abandoned, hated, suppressed, depressed, and stuck in order to transcend them all. We needed to step harder on, on thorn hiding in our shoe in order to stop hiking up this great mountain and remove it with love. At some point, every day, we each run into some feeling of being stuck, blocked, or challenged by something or someone. We feel limited, small, powerless, or suppressed from all our expression. Every human mind already has the program installed to throw it itself into some emotional dumpster repeatedly. There are many little thorns hiding in our shoes that we are unaware of. Does something terrible happens in the outer world? We get dumped by a lover. We end up trashing our self-esteem, our love for life, our feeling of being empowered and falling into some treacherous feeling of being locked up in an emotional prison we cannot escape from. All of this thorny karma we carry may sound terribly depressing, yet it's good to remember that the universe is more loving, mysterious, and intelligent than we could ever imagine. There is a very beautiful yet unobvious reason why this divinely intelligent, deeply eternal loving universe has set life up to throw each and every one of us through experiences of emotional pain, agony, and suffering. The reason is so that we stop everything we are doing and become deeply inspired to evolve in a spiritual dimension. The spiritual path is the only way we can remove all of our thorns and break out of our thick mental and emotional prisons. The only problem is, is that the mind tends to get lazy and wrapped up in old habit. And we'd never search for the keys to our spiritual freedom unless we felt deeply trapped, imprisoned, or stuck. The mind loves to create these emotional prison cells in the brain as each one provides new fuel to blast off into a new experience of creativity, growth, evolution, movement, and eventually reach total liberation. So we all have these wonderfully perfect prickly prisons constructed inside us. Each one is destined to create a deep yearning and desire to be free. We can reject this idea nor it or accept it. Just notice what happens inside your body either way. This search for freedom is a much is as much our destiny as the prisons we've placed ourselves in. There are no real enemies in this world. There are only imaginary shadows. The thorns in our shoes can be removed once we realize that they are also created by our own imaginations. We must choose to move beyond the mind, through the unconscious righteous mind that believes it is aware, yet is truly ignorant and not worshiping the great mystery 24 hours a day. It is this ignorance that is our only real enemy. The mind that is deeply stuck in thought, in ego, and will only strive to create something new when some form of horrific pain, fear, or slavery begins bubbling up inside. And the mind is imagining everything 
that we are experiencing right now. It is believing that our thoughts, beliefs, and all our limitations are real. It is entertaining the feeling that being financially, financially stuck is real, or that our relationships are never going to improve, or we will always live in the same house forever. It has this idea that whatever challenging life experience we're having right now just may be that way forever. The sensations of emotional imprisonment sure do feel real, yet when we step back from them, we see they are just a conglomeration of negative thoughts. When we step back from the mind with awareness, we can understand we are the ones who have thrown ourselves into jail with our imaginations. From this awareness, then we can step out of jail just with using our sweet, simple, yet all-powerful imagination. One who knows the self has nothing more to do, nor has he any more thoughts. From then on, the infinite power will carry out all further actions that may be necessary for him. Ramon Marishi. To acquire now jail pass, we must gift it to ourselves. We must choose to accept that everything and everyone in life is a part of this deep, sweet, holographic, infinite mystery. In this acceptance, we stop feeling limited. We see how our imagination is co-creating everything designing this entire thing we deem as reality. Then, and only then, can we understand what it takes to be free. By knowing what is creating thought, we stop believing in all of its fantasies. We realize that any potential feeling of slavery is a choice from here on out. We understand that we always have the free will and choice and how we wish to interact and engage with any thought that enters the mind and can keep it like a winning lotto ticket or toss it away like a used banana peel. And right now, for all of us, is to not hold on to any beliefs that show up about ourselves, others, and this life. Choose the mystery over certainty just because it is more exciting. It's simply more interesting to not know, isn't it, than to know? It's more exciting to know than to not know. When we're living within the mystery 24 hours a day, we suddenly find ourselves becoming spontaneous free from hesitation, doubt, and barely have any fear. It requires all the courage that we have to keep choosing the mystery over the normal way of being human. Yet, we are much more likely to experience our fears as some weird bubbling state of excitement than something we would run from. We might even see our lives as these wild and wonderful, passionate birthing of random desires to engage and disengage from. Ultimately, it is a mystery how long or short our life is going to last. So why not start embracing it now? When we embrace the mystery as a way of living this life, the mysterious way keeps us truly alive. We start abiding in a state of wonder and deep curiosity about everything. We stop defi defining who we are and start realizing that truly we are actually indefinable. We start seeing amazing intelligent energy is here now, directly in front of our eyes. When we give love, deep eternal love, acceptance to those we encounter, notice what happens.
happens. Notice, just notice what happens. To learn how to transcend any experience of suffering. I think a lot of us feel that, that, that enlightenment is something that, you know, that someone gives to you. Whatever that has been given to you. We all know this can be taken away. It's to find this great spiritual liberation within ourselves. To learn how to cultivate its presence into our lives. As we are the master of it all in the end. All of us are the master of it all in the end. Our enlightenment is destined to find us in this lifetime or the next. To find out what we are. And it's on its way. We simply need to get out of the way and understand how to receive it. When the mind stops all searching in the outer to fulfillment and finally comes to relax home in our very core, the realization is discovered that enlightenment was always there, just buried deep within our being. There's no exceptions for us. We all experience suffering in this life because of one little thing, ignorance. When we ignore the truth of our infinite being, our ignorance expands and soon transfers, uh, transfers us into the path of suffering. To transcend our ignorance and find spiritual freedom in our life again, the intention for a deeper awareness is needed. We must choose to welcome the most profound state of consciousness we can imagine by simply opening up to our own consciousness. We can release anything instantly that would make us suffer. Nothing more than pure awareness is needed to transcend this illusion and rediscover the liberating truth of who we are. We're pure consciousness. The God, the pure consciousness. Not the body. Each, each and every moment, each and every single moment of our lives has the potentiality to become the most liberating, healing, enlightening experience we can handle. Now, of course, the more open, ready, and willing we are to receive something magnificent, the easier and faster the magic comes flooding in. Majority of us stop it. We step in our own way. We, we, we flood it. We block it. But when we are ready for enlightenment, it will come in. We don't have to strive for it. In fact, the harder we work for it, the further it moves away from us, just like everything. So it's a priority that we make. And the priority is to totally relax and enjoy our lives. Fully surrender to our real selves explore who we truly are, what we really want, and what our purpose on earth actually is on a spiritual level. This, this whole transition on this planet is to stop going outside and to start going inside. That's this massive transition of humanity. For thousands of years, this, this civilization has been taught to look outside of itself. For thousands of years, it's been taught that there is no God within it. The God is outside of it. For thousands of years, it's been taught that it has no power, has no ability, no strength. And now it's this full circle of coming within. Only when we go within and stay within do we discover that we are the God. We also discovered that we just surrender to everything and let it flow. We have a tendency, because we've been trained for it, to do the opposite of that, fight it. You know, really, I mean, fight ourselves on a continual basis. The reason we do that is, is because the mind interjects fear on a continual basis. So the fear stops us. The fear is an illusion, and so the illusion stops us. And 
our ego attachment, that stops us from even connecting with the God within us. That's why it's so important for us to choose to know ourselves, surrender to ourselves, love ourselves deeply and eternally, be kind, gentle, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times, being in deep gratitude with ourselves 24-7, loving every aspect of ourselves, good, bad, or indifferent, forgiving every aspect of ourselves, good, bad, or indifferent. And this civilization will, will begin to understand that the journey, the enlightenment, the ascension, is about discovering who and what you are in that body. It's nothing else. It's who and what you are in that body. Once, once one does this, discovers it, they will never, ever seek outside of themselves again because they will have discovered their home. You can be anywhere on this planet or any other planet, but the only home is you. Is the God that you are. That is your home. It will always be your home. Going within, staying within, focusing on meditating, it's the only portal, the only way to discovering the God that you are. Going with the flow. Don't fight the stream. Downstream thinking. Go after the mysterious, the unknown, rather than the known. Because in the unknown, that's where all the possibilities are. Those are the mysteries. That's what motivates us. How often have you gotten curious about the fact that Boy, that's, it really gets into you because you're curious. You want to know the mystery, the secret. Now, the first thing that we care to do is to be somewhere where, where we are uninterrupted. And that's to relax our body. And once you discover that you're not that body, that you, you know, you, you know, I say this a lot for a reason, so that it finally begins to sink in. And when you understand that, in meditation, you're not the body. So you watch the body, and you understand that the body should be in a relaxed state at all times. I don't mean sleeping. I mean, just relaxed. So when you move and you walk and you talk, communicate, it's at ease. It isn't disrupted. There's no fear really in your voice or in your step. It's fluid. It's easy. And this is what moves us greater and greater, deeper and deeper into meeting the God that we are. stress, anxiety, worry, um, envy, hurriedness, that's all the body. It's all the body. It's the illusion of the ego mind. You see, we've been, we all have been tricked so long that we actually believe we are the body. Even though at times we go, I'm not the body, but then we always then we, we're, we're back with the body. And when we do this, all of that stress, and tension, anxiety, worry, and fear fall away because they're illusions. Everything's an illusion. The mind creates an illusion for us, and we're constantly being tricked, believing that it's all out there. It's either up there or out there. And so guess what? That's why we suffer. And it is a choice. For all of us, it's a choice to go within, stay within, or to continually follow the external path. The path away from 
from the God you are. Not the path into the God you are. And when we do this, the body just goes into, it goes into relaxation. It's not thinking, it's not worrying, it's not fearing, it's not stressing, it's not in a hurry. It just is. And when we do this, we still the mind and the ego and the subconscious mind because we're not in them, with them. We are outside of them and we watch them. And we watch them and we watch them. We don't judge them, we watch them and we see how they operate. We see what they do, how they conjure and put things together and how they trick us. And see, as time goes by, you begin to learn it so well that you master. You become the master over the mind and the ego rather, rather than they mastering you. And that, that discovery is absolute bliss. So when you steal the mind and the ego through relaxing the body and just letting go, surrendering, we are in the now. And the now is our breath, divine positive energy. The, 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 the soul comes into the body, powers the body, everything starts coming online functioning. So we run to the oxygen. Now we also know that if, if we did not breathe, we would have to leave the body. If we did not breathe, we would have to leave the body. So it is divine positive energy. It sustains the God within it. It holds it, carries it. And being in the now is it. It's the center path. It is the middle path. You're not, you're not going to the left into the storm or right into the storm. You're staying in the center. You're focused only in the middle. And so when we, we do this in meditation, this meditation, we move into complete peace. You know, tranquility. Quiet. Just by being. All that noise and chatter that we all experience is not there anymore. And we watch as all these thoughts, these programs, float by like clouds in the sky. And we all do this, we all wander off, we can be focused on the now, that's a moment to moment, the breath. But we all we just wander off into a different, uh, we just, into a different thought, experience. And it's imperative that we stay gentle, kind, generous, humble, and in gratitude 24-7 with ourselves. So we, we say, okay, I'm wandering off. I'm off into this thought. And then this thought really isn't mine. So I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. You be in the now 3,000% of the time every time you focus on the breath because the breath is the now. There's no such thing as breath yesterday or breath tomorrow. It's only breath in the now. And when you get this down, you start discovering many other things. And our breath relaxes us, strengthens us, focuses us, energizes us. Now we know that our journey is continual within. It's not like you step inside and discover everything and it's all done. There are layers of discovery. And it's always fascinating. And it's always intriguing. And it is always a mystery. Each step is an unknown. We look at these bodies,
And it's a different perspective when you look at the body within. You start noticing that you see this the seven circles of light, wheels of light running right through the center of that body, all the way to the top of the head. All different colors. And those are energy vortexes. Some people call them chakras. And so what the heck are they? You know? They're etheric, they're not blocks of wood. You know? They come from the spiritual plane. And they're a conduit, they're a connection with the God that we are in these bodies because we are pure, unbridled energy. And so the, so are the vortexes, so are the chakras. So we flow through them. It was like a fountain. If you look at this body, and, and you have the eyes to see how this body looks, operates, you would see this vibrantly multicolored glow, and in the center, this, this brilliant white light. And then you would understand that these energy vortexes you're traveling through. You're the God in that body. And you travel through these energy vortexes, and guess what? They connect everything in that body. You connect to everything in that body. Every quark, every mitochondria, everything, every atom, you are connected to it. You know its flow, its direction, its, its energy, its health, its vibrancy. You know all there is. The God within your body, you, know everything there is to know about that body. Everything. Why do you think we constantly talk and say we are the power of healing? And when you discover it, you go, holy cow, I've been sitting here wasting so much time in the outside world when all along, everything that I ever desired was within me. And then we know that these bodies, right? The souls, the gods, the pure consciousness that we are, we enter these bodies, we power them up. Everything comes online. And we are heaven. And the body is earth. Heaven on earth. And those of us that are consciously aware to a certain extent, we know every step we take, we're creating paradise. Every single step we take, we are creating paradise. Not only that, we are shining our light, our God force, love, light, energy everywhere, 24-7. And who does it affect? Everyone. Everywhere. If you were to take a pebble, and to drop it in a placid lake. At first you would see the waves. You would see the disturbance in the water. But eventually, and as your eyes view it, they would dissipate and it would become like glass again. But the energy of that motion continues throughout that entire lake. shining our light, creating paradise. We are all gods within these bodies. So we are a god planet paradise that grows so bright with eight billion gods within each body that it is the brightest light in all creation. And we're flooding all life, the highest supreme value of the universe, wherever we walk, wherever we are. doesn't diminish, you don't lose it. We know that we are, parts of us are asleep. They're not outside of us, they're with us all the time because they're part of us, all of us. So we know that parts of us are asleep. They don't participate in the meditation because they're asleep so they don't hear anything. So 
then we have other parts of us that are awake. Consciously aware to a certain extent. So we reach out to those parts of us in this meditation. And that's all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And that includes the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes, the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Bandantia, Pell, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, many, many, many more. The archangels, their civilization vibrated a different frequency than we do, so we don't see them like we see each other. We talk with them, we interact with them, we meet with them. We don't know it usually until after that. Then it dawns on us that just you sense it through your heart and mind that that just was that was an angel. And then you have an experience of a little bliss. And they all have the same message. They just say it they just deliver it in many different ways. It, it boils down to is it isn't it absolutely magna glorious, stupendous? Phenomenal to be alive in these bodies. And that's bliss. They can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. Ascended masters have, a, have a mastered ascension into physical form, out of physical form, hold pure consciousness, God form. We are mastering physical form are creating our experiences to perfect our creations. Now, all the light energy beings include all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, and earth, and beneath earth. They're all the off-worlders, galactics, celestials. We're unfamiliar with the smidge of them. Pleiadians, Assyrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, Felines, the Reticuli, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion, many, many, many more. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage, our own self-imposed slavery. And think about this, that we call upon all of these Consciously aware parts of us, of the God, and all that there is ever has, and ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And they come in the Google plexus. One Google plex fills this universe with not even one inch of sacred space to spare. They come in trillions of Google plexes from trillions of universes. All their loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes have even had it. And all of them only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of the highest, 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 deepest, 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 purest, 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 eternal love, gratitude and peace can be with us in this meditation, this now, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. Now, the, the solar light energy beings on this planet, on and in and above and below it, we're, we're familiar with a smidgen of them. They're in the trillions. Shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations, which we've never seen. Our eyes only see 1% of what it is. Fairies, the spikes, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And all of them are with us now, consciously. Arm in arm, hand in hand, all of us in full compassion, non-judgment, 
non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, abundance, benevolence, prosperity. And we're all one, and we're all love, and we're all God. And our God force, love, life, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth and Gaia, Arya, and this now. This light emanates from the God force, love, light, energy deep within every single one of us. This light is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a billion trillion suns to even come close to its brightness. And we are flooding this planet with that brightness. On it, in it, above it, and below it, all of our brothers and sisters, real life, the highest supreme value in the universe, 24-7. You cannot not. It is absolutely magnificent this pure, deep, eternal love that we are flooding over everything. We begin to ascend above the planet and we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. It's everywhere. It's all of us reflecting back and forth to each other. So we, we, we look at where the reflective points are and we focus on those little tiny microscopic mirrors perfectly etched and then we move into them and we discover that all of us gathered in this meditation, consciously aware, to a certain extent. Are teaching and learning from each other. So we're either teaching or learning, learning or teaching, or both. But we're always learning from each other, teaching each other, throughout eternity. What a phenomenal source, each other, and the gods that we are teaching and learning from each other all the time. Remember, someone comes into your life for three seconds or 20 years, you are always learning and teaching. Rather than judging, ridiculing others, try looking at them and asking yourself, what are they teaching me? What am I teaching them? What are we learning? We're always learning. None of us know everything, nor will we ever, because we're always learning. It's part of the experience. We immediately met with the emerald green flaming light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that from head to toe, inside now, 24 to 7, eternally, we are protected with this white fire armor. It emanates from the, the God force, love, light energy within each and every one of us. It is impenetrable. No demon possession, no attachments, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. They can't come near us. They know it. And consciously, we know it through the heart-mind. It they'll vaporize if they do. So they don't. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, fear, greed, deception, manipulation, envy, hurry, stress, anxiety, worry, you lower your vibrational frequency low enough, create a breach in your white fire armor, 
allowing all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then you have demon, and demon possession, demon attachment, and many other things. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. The first one is the purple transmuting flame. We created this one to remind us that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. Then right behind it is the violet ray. The violet ray we, with ray we created to remind us all that we can bring the violet ray in, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest, of the deepest eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We were then met with the golden pink white light. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sun sets and the sun rises. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the clouds in the sky. We are the mountains. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. The trees, the forest, the soil, we're everything. Everything is us. And we are everything. You gotta try it sometime. Sit in silence. Take a look at yourself, nature. View it. Understand that you're, you're part of it. It is you. And you are it. So the next time you see a sunset, or sunrise, or starlit night sky, or an ocean view, it is you. It is the God within you. You're the divineness, the majesty, the beauty, the glory, the love. You are this. We continue to levitate above the planet. As we do, we come into full contact with this massive crystal light tower. Now, we've created this tower. It's larger than this, unit, this solar system. In the center of the column is this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. The golden white bowl of light is surrounded by numerous rings of multicolored light. And we're all sending out these vibrant waves of misty energy and that literally sparkles and touches and, and, and absorbs within us, around us, above us, and below us. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the deepest, purest, eternal love. Then, the next wave from one of the rings is the highest of the deepest, purest, eternal gratitude. And the highest of the deepest, purest, eternal peace. And well-being, and great wealth, great prosperity, great abundance, gentleness, kindness, generosity, bliss, joy. It's endless. It is eternal. And we discover that it is a reflection of the gods that we are. We designed the top of this crystal light tower so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees 24-7 as it's doing right now. This is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love. And it's flooding all of us now, and it's doing it 24-7, never stops. All of our brothers and sisters, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Now all of us are drops of this golden ocean. And we also hold the essence of this golden ocean. drops of the golden ocean, the golden ocean of his drops. The only illusion is separation. You see, our 
meditate a sphere, set center circle. We created this sphere well over three and a half years ago. It holds all of our meditations well over 1,500 in perpetual motion. They never fade. They never lose their energy, period. They strengthen. So imagine all of those meditations flooding this planet, this solar system, this galaxy, and this universe, focused, all of us, hundreds of millions of us, focused on this planet's liberation. Are we the Calvary? Yes. Are we the saviors? Yes. Are we the creators? Yes. And the more we choose to increase our vibrational frequency of love, gratitude, and peace, the more this planet will transcend and all life on it, in it, above it, and below it. That's why this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever behind and forever. This is why it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. It is imperative for us, all of us, to choose to begin the journey within and to stay within and to continually increase our vibrational frequencies until the ego mind is no longer needed and that this planet is truly what it was designed to be. It becomes a God planet paradise. And that's where we're headed. A journey in meditation and return to close us out.
squeeze your breath in through the nose, and then easy breath out through the mouth. Very easily and slowly. Modern man has to become capable of adapting to new situations every day because this world is changing so fast. It is a great challenge. A great challenge if accepted will help tremendously in the expansion of consciousness. Either modern man is going to be utterly neurotic or modern man is going to be transformed by the very pressure. It depends on how you take it. One thing is certain, there is no way of going back. The sensory stimuli will go on increasing more and more. You will be getting more and more information and life will be changing and with faster and faster rhythms. And you will have to be capable of learning, of adapting to new things. In the past, man lived in an almost static world. Everything was static. We would leave the world exactly as our father had left it to us. We would not have changed anything at all. Nothing was changed. There was no question of learning too much. A little bit of learning was enough. And then we had spaces in our minds, empty spaces, which helped people to remain the same. Now there is no more empty space unless you create it deliberately. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, and the following morning. We will return here, August 27th, Friday, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our Global Guided Meditation Call.